Welcome back, Sebastian here. So starting my mid-season uh, Formula One reviews uh, with uh, 10th place in the Constructors' Championship, Sauber. So of course, in their second last season as Sauber before they transitioned to Audi, uh, it's really been more of the same, uh, kind of the steady downhill decline that we've seen the last couple of years. It really feels like they're just kind of waiting for the team to become the uh, Audi Works team. And the management really seems to feel like uh, they're just gonna magically be a really strong team like even, or, or even a respectable midfield team uh, like Mercedes was when they joined in 2010. So first taking a look at their uh, drivers head to head, their two drivers, Valtteri Bottas, Zhou Guang Yu. Uh, starting with qualifying, uh, been quite a dominant, uh, dominant uh, run in run of form in qualifying for Valtteri Bottas, 13 to one qualifying head to head, and uh, median qualifying delta, uh, 0 0.511 seconds. So gap that's almost doubled uh, in comparison to 2022-2023. Really, really mysterious why this is. Honestly, based on the first season results between Joe and Bot has in qualifying, you would expect those results to kind of get closer and closer together. Maybe not, you know, maybe you wouldn't expect Joe to, uh, you know, out be out qualifying Bot has necessarily, but at least, you know, making it closer and improving from that rookie season. But instead, the opposite really happened. So really odd to see this kind of situation in F1, definitely not something that doesn't happen very often. But as a result, because of how uncompetitive the car is, you know, teams will look at that qualifying result. And I think really realistically, uh, they wouldn't really want to sign Joe for next year, even if, uh, if he didn't have this result, just based on 2022, based on 2023, with that sponsorship money that we know he brings from China. Uh, some teams might have been willing to take a punt on him, but with the qualifying becoming uh, much, a much more of an issue for Zhou this year, I think teams have really kind of soured on his, uh, him as a driver. Now, uh, average starting position, basically what you would expect. Uh, of course, if uh, Sauber was a bit more competitive, a bit closer to the RBs, Williams even, uh, or the Haas, uh, you would see the gap in starting position be much bigger. But because Sauber's a pretty slow car, Bottas average starting position 15.06 and Peugeot 17.76. So two point uh, seven positions difference, a bit too large there. Average finishing position, quite strange. Uh, definitely not what you would expect based on their starting position. Now for uh, Bottas 15.38 and Peugeot 15.0. So Peugeot, he's generally improving in the races. Uh, these, these numbers include sprint race results and Peugeot, of course, got that ninth place in the sprint in China course not a full race distance so if you remove those results that would definitely hurt that overall number. Uh, for Bottas though definitely sliding a little bit backwards in the race and because mechanical reliability has been so strong this year uh, simply driver, drivers in those lo lower teams are not benefiting from DNFs higher up the grid so they're basically even if they have a good qualifying result they're basically just sliding back into where they would be in then kind of the natural pecking order of things over a full race distance. Uh, points, there aren't any, 0-0 zero, zero, uh, for both of them, and as a result, they sit 19th and 21st in the championship, respectively, with Joe being ahead uh, because of that 11th place finish in Bahrain, which given how things were going and given that was the first race of the season, uh, that may end up being the best result and decide that rank in the championship, which for Bottas, I think, would be a bit of a shame. I think he's had a decent year, uh, particularly in qualifying, and that kind of is borne out in my average power rankings. I definitely think Bottas has been the better driver of the two. I've rated him 13.8 uh, on average, 13.8 uh, on average, uh, which you know when you rank the full grid is 17th overall. Still not great, but again, when the, the team has been as bad as it is, uh, it's really hard to shine in such a poor car. Uh, for Joe, 16.0, uh, 19th of the full-time drivers, only ahead of Sargent. Now, for points above expected for my average uh, expected points model. Of course, because both zero drivers have no points, uh, it's impossible for that to be in the positive. So for Bottas, negative 1.08, uh, and for uh, Zhou, that's actually the, uh, yeah, the decimal's in the wrong spot. That's a negative uh, 0 0.28, not negative 2.0. Uh, so there we go, negative 0.28. Uh, so definitely saying Bottas should have scored about a point by now based on uh, where the strength of the car in the races and based on where he's starting. For Joe, he would have gotten a point and basically one out of a one of one in four chance of getting points based on this model. And of course, for percentage-wise, both of them 
zero percent. Uh, 2021, now, so looking at the, kind of the history of the team last four years and kind of the overall trend of things, uh, 2021, the last year of the old regulations, uh, ninth in the constructors, 13, uh, 13 points, pole gap 1.727 seconds, average minimum, finish, minimum finishing position, which I think is a relatively new thing I made at the end of last year. Uh, and that's basically uh, what I think is a really good way of tracking how good a car actually is in races. Uh, and it isn't, isn't as reliant on uh, random point finishes or massive disparities in uh, abilities between two drivers. Uh, 2022, uh, six in the constructors have obviously th their best point under these ground effects uh, regulations. 55 points, of course, the first half of that season was very, very strong. At some points, uh, racing Mercedes on track, and of course that looks like a, comp like a very distant dream. Uh, but yeah, 55 points total, average pull gap 1.456, which still seems big, but given it was the first year in the new regulations, it wasn't honestly that bad. Average minimum, average minimum finishing position, 10.33, uh, which is a bit low for a sixth place uh, team in the constructors, but second half of the season, they definitely got outdeveloped by most by a lot of the other cars on the grid. And by the end of the season, they were seventh, eighth, ninth best team at most tracks. Uh, 2023, uh, second year of the regulations, uh, some of that backsliding that we saw the first half of 2022, definitely uh, we saw it continue into 2023, ended up with only 16 points, ninth in the constructors, average pull gap 1.294 seconds, and then average minimum finishing position 12.1. 2024 this year, of course, 10th in the constructors, which is why they're first in the series. Uh, points, there aren't any, like I said before, Pull gap 1.472. So even though with the regulations in theory things are supposed to be kind of coalescing, getting closer together, uh, for Sauber the things are going further apart. They're falling, definitely falling off uh, in in terms of development. Uh, 1.47. So about uh, two tenths of a second slower on average than last year. And of course, that's only in dry conditions. Average minimum finishing position 14.28. So again, from 2022 to 2023 to 2024 about two positions lost each of those years. So uh, in 2025, maybe they'll be hitting in the 16s, uh, which would be pretty, pretty poor. That's like 2019 Williams level bad. Uh, but hopefully for Hulkenberg's sake and whoever his teammate is alongside, uh, that won't uh, be the case. Uh, before we get onto the notes at the bottom of the board, in which you know includes Hulkenberg, uh, just as a comparison for the first six races, uh, which is when I did my quarter season review. So of course, this is after race 14 in the summer break. Uh, race one to six uh, was when I did my quarter review and just kind of to get, kind of, kind of get a sense of how things are going in the development race. Uh, these are the uh, average starting and finishing positions for Bottas and Joe respectively uh, through in that quarter season review. 14.0 uh, for Bottas, 17.5 uh, for Joe. So for Bottas, uh, kind of gone backwards a little bit, one position, and Peugeot about the same position there uh, in terms of starting position. Finishing position, 15.14, uh, so a little bit worse for Bottas, and Peugeot, 13.14, uh, so quite a bit worse uh, for Joe in that respect, kind of coalescing towards the end of the season. And honestly, by the end of the season, uh, I would not be surprised if Bottas has the better score in terms of average finishing position, uh, just how things are going, because there's such a big difference uh, in their starting positions and uh, because I don't think really there's Joe is not that is not that much better than Bottas if at all uh, in the race pace uh, to really make up that difference uh, in starting position if that trend continues. Uh, now, so taking a look to how things are going. So Hulkenberg obviously signed pretty early on for 2025. His teammates still unknown. Of course, the two names that have been rumored for the last three or four months to be uh, alongside Hulkenberg have been signs and Ocon. Of course, both of those drivers have now signed. Uh, contracts at uh, Williams and at Haas respectively. So that really leaves a very few options. Of course, Bottas and Joe are still technically options available. Magnus, Magnuson's also an option. Uh, Sargent, I guess, is an option, although I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, and then you're really kind of left with rookies. And of course, there's been there's some interesting rookies in F2. There's Liam Lawson as well, who may or may not be available in the near future. But again, we shall see who they decide to pick up. Of course, the news from uh, quite recent news is that Andreas Seidel is out. Uh, I believe, what is his name? Oliver? No, Oliver Oaks was the guy who was the uh, 
rumored to replace come in. But yeah, Sardo's out. I think the head, uh, one of the head technical uh, head, heads of the technical team is also out. And Jonathan Wheatley, of course, has been uh, in charge of uh, basically trackside performance, uh, sporting performance, that kind of thing at Red Bull Racing is now been brought in as team principal. So uh, very unusual to see this kind of shake up mid-season, especially with some of those moves bringing in Seidel or, or with a view to 2026. And of course, Seidel kind of being out before 20, before that period's even started. It's definitely kind of a sign things are not, you know, all well in terms of Audi management, how things are kind of going on behind the scenes. So again, I think expectations that were already not super high are probably even lower now. So I do think there are some real questions about what, uh, where Audi is going to be in the pecking order come 2026. So there you go. There's my uh, mid-season review of Sauer. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.